Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not because you're on the road. You need 200. <coughs> Just for that road? Yeah. You're on the air. It's wide. You have a minute. Microphone's yeah. open. Can we all go? Shall we begin or shall we wait? It Let's begin. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I'm assuming he's coming. He's okay. the captain. Mm -hmm. Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of Monday, May 7th, 2018. If I can have Councillor Lesser please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina? Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rao? Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor uh, Morandello? Here. Thank you. Thank you. We will begin this evening with a um, Proclamation for Public Works Week of May 20th through 26th. And I see Sally Katz in the audience. If you'd come on up to the podium with me. Hi, Sally. Thank you for being here. Um, so whereas public works infrastructure, facilities, park and open spaces and service are vital are of vital importance to the health, safety, and well-being of the residents of Wethersfield. And whereas it has been demonstrated that Wethersfield Public Works provides critical response capabilities, experience, and support to all levels of government and town agencies in times of natural and man-made disasters. And whereas it is in the public interest for all citizens and civic leaders of Wethersfield to gain knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest in the public works needs programs and employees. Now therefore, I, Amy Morin Bellow, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby designate the week of May 20th through 26th, 2018 as National Public Works Week. And I urge all our residents to pay tribute to our public works employees and to recognize the substantial contributions of health, welfare, and quality of life they provide daily to Wethersfield. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Wethersfield to be affixed this seventh day of May, 2018. Thank you. And I'd like to just add that we really have um, some tremendous dedicated employees that are working within the confines of a tight budget, but they're maintaining our parks, they're maintaining our roads, they're doing the snow plowing. Uh, maintaining all of our fields, uh, exteriors of buildings. So, Sally, you really do a great job keeping the town looking as good as it does. So I want to thank you and then also mention that we have a Phillip Public Works truck coming up and you can drop off non-perishable goods at Stop and Shop on the Berlin Turnpike on Sunday, May 20th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I did just see on Facebook that um, the food pantry is running low on items. So this is a great tie-in with our food pantry. And I thank you for your efforts. You. Did you want to say anything? I would like to thank everyone. Um, our staff really does work very hard to try to create a healthy and safe environment for the residents of Wethersfield. And really to urge everyone to come out to the Stuff a Truck event on Sunday, May 20th, as it will benefit uh, the most needy people in the town. And we really do appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a second proclamation tonight for Bike and Walk Month. Kevin, would you come on up and come on up with him? So I had the honor of um, taking part yesterday on the first annual Mayor's Bike and Walk event in Old Weathersfield. And the weather held out, the rain held out for us. Um, I chose to do the walk, not the bike. Uh, but we had a good hearty crowd and we had a nice um, morning. So thank you for organizing that. 
Um, so here we go. Whereas for more than a century, the bicycle has been an important part of the lives of most Americans. And whereas today, millions of Americans engage in bicycling as an environmental sound form of transportation, an excellent form of fitness, and provides quality family recreation. And whereas the education of cyclists and motorists as to the proper and safe operation of bicycles is important to ensure the safety and comfort of all users. And whereas the League of American Bicyclists and individual cyclists throughout our state are promoting greater public awareness of bicycle operation and safety education in an effort to reduce accidents, injuries, and fatalities. And whereas the town of Wethersfield recognizes the health benefits of walking and the social and economic benefit of a safe walking community. And whereas the town of Wethersfield, through groups like Bike Walk Wethersfield, Safe Routes to School, Central Connecticut Health District, and others are striving to make our community more bicycle and pedestrian friendly through events such as the Bike Walk to School Day, Bike to Work Day, Mayor's Bike and Walk, the Bike Fest, and Step into Summer Competition. Now, therefore, on behalf of the Town Council, I, Amy Morin Bello, Mayor of the Town of Wethersfield, do hereby proclaim the month of May as Bike and Walk Month in, the Wethersfield, in Wethersfield, Connecticut, and command its observance to all citizens. In witness whereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the Town of Wethersfield to be affixed the seventh day of May, 2018. Thank you. Uh, we would like to thank the town for its support with the event yesterday. Uh, ec echoing Mayor Bellows' comments about DPW, they did some really nice repairs of the trail around the cove prior to the event, so that was nice and safe. There were some big ruts in that from the, the winter, bad winter weather that we had. Uh, we also got some uh, help from the police department and Parks and Rec as well, so that's very much appreciated. And everybody here should by now be registered for the four town walking competition. It's very easy to register and get set up. Your, uh, if you have an iPhone, uh, it counts your steps, even if you're not like going out for an extra walk for the competition. Uh, so please register at the uh, Central Connecticut Health District website. Thanks a lot. I'd just like to echo thanks to the mayor. I know it's really important for our town as we try to become a bicycle friendly community. And the National uh, League of Bicyclists recognizes um, leadership of the town councils and mayors. And having a mayor's led event is one of the big things. So we really thank you for kind of coming out and, and showing your force. And then uh, just encourage everybody in town to we have a Facebook page. We have a bike to work event on May 18th. You can find some information on that. And the, the bike um, festival is in June. And so we're really trying to build a bicycle and walking culture. And I think it happens from the ground up. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we will move into public comment. We have no hearings tonight, so we will start with um, public comment. Members of the public may speak on any item. You have uh, five minutes to speak. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Good evening, Gas Colantonio, 60 Morrison Avenue. A uh, few things uh, I want to mention that basically a couple of weeks ago I, I did meet with the mayor and it was a very pleasant, uh, nice one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion. I really enjoyed it and, and I would suggest that more people in town should do that whenever we have that occasion. Uh, that was a happy one. Another thing today, uh, you know, there, there were two uh, Public works, I guess, you know, physical services. Uh, they were cutting down a tree up the street. And I was really pleasantly surprised. They start about 8 o'clock. And, and I tell you, these guys, they never took a break until they left. It was about 12.30. I was surprised they worked. And I know how hard it is to, to work with that chainsaw, especially when you are like, you know, 50, 60, 70 feet above ground, you know. Uh, I thought that was awesome. I talked to them and I says, wow, you know, you guys are working hard. So 
that was a pleasant surprise. They cleaned up after them, and they did not finish it. They're going to come back tomorrow, but they did a great job. That's two positive things, right? Well, uh, last year, I guess, and, and every once in a while, I still complain about uh, the corner building and, and Silas Dean and, and, and Morrison Avenue, where the driveway on, on the south side of Morrison Avenue is... Uh, when you get out of there, it's impossible to see when you look up at Morrison Avenue. That's where they had uh, the accident. It's been a few months now, nothing has been done, and it's still dangerous. Are we waiting for another accident before something happens? Basically, the evergreen goes over the sidewalk. It doesn't bother me because I'm short, so I can go underneath. But if you get a normal guy that is a little bit taller, I think he has to duck. There's something wrong with that. So anyway, for now, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Come on up, sir. If you would state your name and your address, please. Uh, my name is Luigi Torca, and I live at a 148 Charter Road in Wittersfield. Here's my biff. I don't mind paying taxes for the house. I got no problem with that. I never complained. I never did it. But I do have a beef with the street that I live, full of holes. Driving through there and I watch other people driving, it's like playing hopscotch while you're driving, with all the holes. I uh, talked to uh, the town manager. He said to me that he was going to patch up. The following day, it's true, they patched up eight holes. The rest of it was all forgotten. It was not patched up. The side of the streets, the ones that they patch up during the winter, that gravel, the first car went up, we pull it up, and it's all over the road now. It's on both sides of the road, and it looks terrible. Main holes are full of in the water, don't go through. Every time it has a heavy rain, it looks like international falls with little lakes in there. What the hell, are you guys forgot about us? We do pay taxes just as much as anybody else. It seems I call here and says, well, there is no fund. I'm asking the town council to allocate special funds to repair, mill, and, and, and pave the, the street. Not next year, not that you're up, this year. I, when I bought the house over here 32 years ago, I was proud. I was moving to Wethersfield. Well, I said, I, 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 I achieved an accomplishment. And I was proud. I'm still proud. But not the way it's going on now. Even though, even though we're here on the Salasdina Highway, the streets no curbs. Even if the, if the state paves the roads, but it's your, it, it's, it's the, of the few people to go and take care on the street. Curbs are missing, filled dirt all over there. Don't we have a, 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 clean, a machine that cleans the street? Because I have never seen it. Now the beef that I have is to it. I have no trees in my house. On my, both sides of my house, there is uh, two big, huge trees. Across from me, there is two big trees. And every time there is a big storm, my wife is always feared that one of these is going to break and fall right on our house. I'm 73 years old. I have one lung. I don't have the energy to do physical work. And every time there is something to be done, I have to pay someone. Whoever was the Einstein that said to put the leaves on a, on a curb, it don't work for me because I have to pay the landscape with a clean for me. It's cost me around sixteen to two thousand dollars every year. So he take it away because if he picks it up and puts it on the curb, one hour later it's back in my in, in my thing there. Come on guys, please. Fix the street now. Not next year, not the year after. I locate to somebody. Have a special meeting. That is all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Torsha. Is there somebody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I'd like to continue on with the budget issues since there wasn't enough time at the last meeting. Um, on intro three of your budget book, Grand List, 
It talks about your grand list increase, which was 0.38. It talks about the price of homes this year being 247,000. $233 in 2017. That, I mean, that is the, the average sale price. I would think you would have at least put in what the prior year's home price is, because now I have to go scurvy and try to figure out and, and find out what was the home prices last year. And of course, the home prices last year, after I looked around, was 255000 Six hundred and twenty dollars, and and I believe it should be in here. A, a budget should be complete and achievable, and e even easy for someone to read. But the fact remains that if our homes last year in 2016, the average was two hundred and fifty-five thousand six twenty, and this year two hundred and forty-seven thousand two hundred and thirty-three dollars. We took a beating. We took a beating. These, and I guess it's based on 380 homes that sold. Not on all the homes. It just sets the pace for the whole darn grand list. Because those other homes haven't sold. This is only 3.7, 3.8% of all the homes. You had 380 houses condos that sold, and they sold for less than, they sold at a, at a negative of $8,300, rounded off. I've complained about how homes are going down in price. The manager, as well as the prior uh, mayor, argued the fact that prices were going up. These are your numbers, folks. They're not my numbers. And I'm not taking them from somewhere. I'm taking them directly from your budget book. And for us to lose, on the average, on the average, $8,300 for every single family and condo in this town, I think that's pretty bad. I mean, we pay a tremendous amount of taxes. So we pay the taxes, which are five, six, seven, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars per house. And we lose 8,300 on an average house. And if you have an above average house, you lost even more. Mayor, I believe you live in an above average house. You probably lost a half a fortune. Other people live in a house that's less. And they lost less. But the fact is, we lost $8,300 in the sale price of our homes from 2016 to 2017. We don't know how 18 is going to be yet. We're right in the, the brisk of the spring market, and we'll see how that turns out. But as interest rates start cranking up again, and they're going to, uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing any great times in the, in the near future. I think we're going to see a lot of problems. Uh, going, going into your schedules of your budget book, and it's probably... Not a page. I don't see a page number on there, but it's called Capital Improvements. And working in on the second page of Capital Improvements, uh, you have a number of projects that you're planning on spending money on this year. And I notice you have a salt shed. You have physical truck garage. Um, you know, we citizens have to make out with what we currently have. I would think that the town would too, but I, but I also know the town doesn't go without very much. But I would think that we start looking at some of these costs and, and, and eliminating them, because we definitely can't afford them. The Solomon Wells House, you're going to spend $160,000, and how much do you get out of it? You have baseball, uh, basketball courts, $100,000. I mean, where, where, do we get our, where do we get our return on this stuff? I think I spoke last time about Catone Field Fence. How much are you going to spend in, in the next couple, in year 2100, uh, 2100, 90,000. 
Mr. Young, well, your time is, Mr. Young, your time's up. Have my five just, minutes gone by? It did, actually, yes. If you would just finish up, please. Well, you have windows. Yeah, I'll wrap it up. Yeah. You have windows that 875000 for a school that was renovated 10, 15 years ago that has never been completed. And having, I, I, I really feel putting those windows in here that are so unrealistic to be performed is wrong. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up. Uh, good evening, David Krug, 149 Broad Street. Um, I don't have too much to say, uh, more of a comment um, on the agenda. It has here, uh, it mentioned the board in, that's something I'm interested in. I'm all for the uh, expansion of the board in into that uh, 1160, so I've seen that uh, joining that uh, adjacent built uh, office uh, that looks like a uh, brick uh, box, a very ugly building. I, I'm glad to see that transformed into a, a beautiful building, and that would definitely make look much nicer in uh, on the side of Steen Highway. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that in the future. Those two buildings right next to each other, the fun zone and that uh, that uh, box brick box. That's what it looks like. There's there's no landscaping around it. It's it's one of the ugliest buildings on the side of I'm glad that's going to be transformed into something beautiful. But you meant in this uh, in the regular minutes says approval of memorandum of understanding between the Capital Region Development Authority and the Town of Wethersfield for the development of a, so Capital Region Development Authority, that's what they do. They, uh, their purpose is to uh, stimulate development in the Capital Region. And, but uh, I'm not sure what they're gonna do. It says, Memorandum of Understanding. I wish there was a little bit more to say here because I could comment, but my comment would be a guess uh, until you voted. And then after you vote, then I could comment afterward, but the vote is already made. So I wish you had a little bit more detail in, in your agenda so, I, so the public could understand what you're gonna be voting on before, so they can comment on it before you vote on it. But uh, I'm all for the, uh, the Borden Project and whatever Capital Region Development Authority is gonna do uh, in support of it. Maybe, maybe we'll get some state money from them. I, I'm not sure what, it, what, what their input is, but uh, that's all I wanna say, thanks. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak in the, from the audience? Anybody else? Okay, then we'll declare the public session closed and we will move on to council reports. Any council members have reports for this evening? Councilor Lesser. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I'll just report that the Shared Service Committee met last Monday, April 30th, and we uh, passed out a committee um, to combine services with the custodial staff and to move the management of, of the, from the board of the town, and it's on our agenda tonight to take action on that, but that was in shared services. And lastly, the Chamber of Commerce, um, there's two events coming up. May 9th, Wednesday, is the um, Best of Awards night, starting at 5.30. And on May 20th is the Spring Car Show. I think it's at Putnam Park. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mayor. Any other council members? Councilor Breton? Thanks, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say that I had the pleasure um, and opportunity to participate in the Arbor Day um, ceremony uh, where a tree was planted at the, at the uh, Pitkin Community Center. Center. Um, and it was great. It was a great crowd, um, a lot of folks in attendance. Um, the mayor was there, Councilor Rell, um, town manager, um, tree warden, and fourth grade kids came and talked about trees. Um, they had poems. They had... Uh, nice uh, drawings, it was really a nice event. Um, and uh, you know, it's just great to live in a town that has, um, has a designation of Tree City USA. So um, it was a wonderful event, so. Thank you, any other council reports? Deputy Mayor? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Commission, instead of having a regular meeting, had their spring uh, fair, which was uh, bringing in two people from the state of Connecticut to talk about long-term care and there were probably about 92 to 95 people that showed up for that event and uh, gave them information on what they might need to look at for the future towards the retirement. I stayed for a part of it and uh, 
it was a very good program and I think people learned something about long-term care and whether they should get it or not for themselves thank you any other any other reports move on to council comments any council members have comments Councilor Forrest thank you mayor um, first is uh, just wanted to acknowledge that um, you know there was a gentleman here that was talking about the roads and I think that even at this dais we sort of talked about the roads fairly extensively and their condition or in some cases the lack thereof and it looks like there's a group of people here that are sort of in the same boat on this particular road or in this particular area so um, and you know walk around town we've certainly had a lot of talk about the roads so it might be something that we consider um, you know as we go through our budgetary process that that might be a priority of this particular council sort of we deem fit but it might um, might be something that we take a serious look at uh, the second thing is um, you know, I was just listening to Gus uh, mr. Colantonio about the many times that certainly has come up about his his thoughtful concerns about Morrison Avenue and I don't know maybe this is the town manager or just generally to the mayor too just um, you know he certainly had some concerns about some bushes he's had some concerns about some sight lines he's had some concerns about a stop sign and maybe maybe there's a way and I'm not talking about like a formal report but but just a way to sort of take a look at and see if the traffic patterns are as we expected them to be take a look at whether or not um, you know some of these sight lines some of his concerns are um, something the town is interested in or or if they are uh, different than they were before when we last took a look at them I know we've taken several looks at them in certain ways and I, I kind of throw that out either to the council or to the mayor and and to sort of uh, look at these concerns and and maybe with a fresh set of eyes after a few years or several years ago that we've done it and uh, and see whether or not they have a merit of any type of an action but that's maybe to the rest of you guys too just some thoughts thank you councillor Forrest any other comments I would just support councillor Forrest's comments if we could maybe take another look at that okay thank you deputy mayor uh, it, since our last meeting we've had a couple of uh, ribbon cuttings in town I uh, just want to bring forward the uh, Pasta Vita opened up on the Silestine Highway uh, City Fix opened on the Silestine Highway small business uh, that works on uh, cell phones and provides service for them uh, there was a chamber of business after hours at uh, Berkshire Holloway that was held uh, last Saturday uh, there was the annual fishing derby down at uh, Spring Street Pond uh, that it's really great to be there to see the kids get the enjoyment out of it, especially the last group that shows up, which the kids from kindergarten through first grade, they really get into it. And I'd really like to take the two groups that work with Kathy Bagley and Park and Rec, that's uh, the Weathersville Fishing Game and Unica, who provide the financial and support to the kids during that function. Uh, I think it's really great. And I'm sure the mayor will have something to say a little later. Uh, today, her and I were down at uh, uh, Harlow Market for uh, 20 towns in 20 days with uh, Channel 3, and uh, it was great to see so many people show up for that event. I know I looked at their event down in Milford on Facebook last week, saw a friend of mine on there, and there were only about eight or 10 people there for that, and I think there were probably like 50 or 60 people there just today, mm -hmm. so I mean, uh, it's a great thing and great publicity for our town. Thank you. Um, if I could just follow up, Dave, the uh, full agenda packet is available online um, the Thursday, Thursday, right? The Thursday, mm -hmm. Thursday afternoon before the uh, meeting so that you are able to see all of the background information that we get to um, because the memorandum of understanding that you were um, mentioning is in that packet. So just for future reference, if you, you know, have the opportunity over the weekend to look through the agenda, we do have the whole um, agenda with all the attachments available online and um, is there a copy in the library as well no it's online it's online there you have it um, and I I'm gonna um, agree with both councillor Forrest and councillor Lesser can we um, we just looked at it can we too look long at ago. it okay can we see that information because I it's been presented to the council but when was the last time we've had a full engine like had the engineer go out and had the police set up a Two years a ago. machine okay now the issue he has on the on the building at the 
end of the street. That was the only accident that we've recorded in 15 years. And there is an issue, but the issue is that driveway is supposed to be in only. Derek Greger, the town engineer, is working with the owner to restripe that to be an entry only and exit onto the Silas. That's the issue with that particular entrance. Okay, so maybe we can follow up. We'll, we'll follow up with that after the meeting. Um, and I um, just briefly, Saturday night, I attended the Weathersfield Volunteer Fire Department's award awards banquet. Um, it was a wonderful evening. We recognized the uh, years of service of many officers, and we remembered those officers that are no longer with us. Um, and also, we, like I mentioned before, I had the privilege of uh, walking in the mayor's walk and bike. And as the deputy mayor mentioned, um, this afternoon we had Courtney Zeller in town doing a live broadcast, 20 towns in 20 days. And it was a great turnout. We had you know, the Little League teams, we had the Colonel Chester Fife and Drum Corps. So really a nice community event, and I was happy to take part in that as well. Um, are there any other council comments? I, I have one, oh. Madam Mayor. Uh, one of the things the Memorial Day Parade Committee has done, um, apparently years ago, the various elementary schools used to do Memorial Day posters, and that's what you see around you. These are the sixth grade art classes from the various elementary schools. Uh, in addition to the essay contest, um, they all participated in making these uh, great Memorial Day posters. Uh, so that's what you see surrounding um, the town council chambers. Thank you, Councillor Spinella. Anybody else? Okay, we'll move on to the town manager's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. On the podium this evening is a revised memorandum with the school. There was a couple of typos in it, so we just uh, updated it. The substance hasn't changed at all. Perfect. Um, if you follow the recent news, Rocky Hill is working on a project with the private property owner to close the landfill in Rocky Hill. Uh, Derek and I, uh, the town engineer and I, went and uh, made some comments regarding the traffic pattern, which primarily will go through Weathersfield. We just made the comment that we'd prefer a route more direct, which would bring them down the Silas into Rocky Hill and then use uh, Glastonbury Avenue to the ferry landing, and that would be the most direct route. So that is, uh, there's more to come on that, I'm sure, over the next couple months. But uh, that's what I had. Okay, thank you. Town Clerk, do you have any communications? I do. If anybody, um, with the election coming up, we will be having probably uh, on August 14th, the primary. We don't know who's involved yet, but they expect that both parties, the Dems and the Republicans, would both have uh, people running for various offices that are challenging each other. Um, and if you want to vote in one of those primaries, if you are in a party and want to change to the other one, you have only until this, the 14th of this month to switch from party to party. Otherwise, um, it's too late. You have to vote in your own party. And then June 1st is dog licensing month in uh, the state of Connecticut. And our office offers um, licenses for all the dogs. June 6th, we are having a shred event at the church at, in the parking lot right behind Town Hall from 9 to 1. And they have, um, at the high school, they're also ha having a collection of anything that you need to, um, <clears throat> need special disposition. And that's during the day, also uh, morning. That's it. Okay, thank you. Moving into council action. Our first item, we have a resignation from a Boards and Commission. Do I have a motion? Yes. What? Thank you, Mayor. I move um, acceptance of the resignation of Tom Raganis from the Park and Rec Board. Tom uh, is 140 Birchwood, uh, Birch Road. I second that motion and thank Tom for his long years of service. And if I could just add, Mayor, that on Wednesday night at the Best of Chamber Awards, um, Tom is being awarded um, I think volunteer of the year for the town. So it's a fitting award for him and great years of service and now he's coming off the board. Great, thank you. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, um, any nays? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, we have no appointments to boards and commissions and no approval of ordinances and resignations. 
We are keeping the vehicle lift under unfinished business, so we'll move into other business. An approval of a memorandum of understanding. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the Capital Region Development Authority and the Town of Wethersfield for the redevelopment of 1178 Silestine Highway, the Borden. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. As you know, the state of Connecticut has uh, uh, granted or gifted or provided $5 million to the Town of Wethersfield through the Capital Region Development Authority for the redevelopment of 1178 Silestine Highway, which is what's called the Fund Zone. Um, those grant funds uh, are spelled out in this agreement that $2,500,000 is a direct grant and there's another $2,500,000 which is a loan that the developer uh, must pay back. Um, it, the agreement outlines CRDA as the entity that's going to manage the funds and manage the project um, and also the agreement invites CRD, CR, CRDA in to the municipality as required by law. So basically what this agreement does is it contracts the town with CRDA to manage these funds. Thank you. Do the I developer will sign his own agreement with CRDA and be fully responsible for the prepayment of the funds. The town in no way is responsible for the repayment. Thank you. And is this the last step in the ongoing process? Uh, I don't know where the developer is with CRDA, but it's our last step other than a other than actually reviewing for building code compliance and engineering compliance, the plans. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? Sure. Council Hurley? Um, it's, it, Jeff, it says uh, as a contractor for the town, the authority, sh the authority shall review and approve project design documents and specifications. Mm -hmm. They don't have a, authority to change anything, any of our town rules, right? Because it says they have the approval of our of the design and specifications right it would have to be consistent with building code and planning and zoning requirements it doesn't say can it say that in here we can ask him for a friendly amendment to it i mean the state can do whatever they want with i know how they work it wouldn't be consistent with the planning and zoning approval so it wouldn't get it wouldn't get a building permit okay if you think it's okay I just don't want them to approve something that our town doesn't want well not only have this project been through design review it's been through planning and zoning it's been through DOT it's been through MDC it's been through our own engineering department through our own building department um, so okay and we don't have control over them right it says the number of personnel is reasonably determined by the authority and reasonably acceptable to the town. That yes. doesn't mean we, so we do have control over them? No, we, they're just pledging to us that they'll keep this project moving. Okay, and then what happens if there's an issue between the CRDA and the, um, the contractor of the board? Then they have to work it out. They, the town is not responsible for anything. Okay. We're, we're responsible to the point at which things have to meet building code and the planning and zoning requirements. That was specifically um, spelled out in the agreement that our role is regulatory, not administrative. And they can't overrule any of that? No, because that's state law. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to let anybody override building code. Any other questions, Councilor Hurley? No, I'm all set. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll call for a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, our next item of business is simple recycling. We have Kristen Brown, the consultant here. Welcome. Town manager, do you want to give a brief oh, overview? I'm sorry. Um, simple recycling, as the mayor brought it to my attention, it's something that other towns have, have used 
It's a way for homeowners to recycle textiles, clothing, shoes, uh, those kind of things. Um, we don't currently offer a curbside solution for this for those products. So simple recycling does that for communities. There is a typo in the in the packet. Um, it says that simple recycling only pays twenty dollars a month. It's actually they'll pay us twenty dollars a ton. Okay. So right. I'll turn it over to Ms. Brown. Great, thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, so I am a consultant. I work for a company called Weight Zero, and I, I consult for state governments, counties, uh, cities and towns, and occasionally I consult for a company. Simple Recycling is a private company, uh, They and it's actually been one of the most fun projects I've done in a really long time. Uh, it's it's fun, I guess, because the bag is pink. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's, it's simple and it's easy to do. Uh, so Simple collects at the curbside uh, used clothing. Um, it could be clothing, it could be bedding, it could be pillows or towels or soft goods, uh, shoes, purses, and these things can be damaged or broken or you can have just one shoe. Um, they basically uh, collect all this material on a bi-weekly basis uh, and they mirror your recycling route. So their truck uh, goes on the same route as your recycling route. So if you put your recycling out on Tuesdays, you could also put out your pink bag of textiles on Tuesdays. Um, the, um, I guess the, the, the sort of primary um, focus right now is New Britain. New Britain is the first Connecticut hub for simple recycling and the way that the simple recycling model works is they uh, put a hub in a location and then all of the communities that have curbside uh, recycling collection within a 45 minute driving radius uh, can participate in the program through that hub. So your material would be collected and then it would be brought to the New Britain hub. They uh, sort the material by different uh, categories. So category one is the material that is in good condition that could be resold. Uh, it's sold by the pound to uh, thrift stores like Savers or to Goodwill or Salvation Army. Uh, this way they buy it by bulk and they're able to put it in their stores. The second level of material is something that could be maybe not in style for Americans but would work by going overseas. So the second level of material is sold off on a shipped uh, container load out to other countries that need the material. And then the third level of material is something that's broken or damaged or one single shoe, um, ripped clothing, although ripped clothing is in style because my daughter's clothes are all ripped. <laughs> but what, you know, so ripped towels, whatever like that. Um, so all of that material is then reused in a different way or repurposed or recycled. So um, some of it could be made into insulation or carpet padding. A lot of the leather goods or the uh, rubber shoe uh, tennis shoes are can be ground up and they're used as padding in uh, basketball gym floors or you know playgrounds. So there's all kinds of things out there and they have all kinds of outlets. Uh, so simple recycling just makes it easier for residents to participate. Uh, one of the successes of recycling, if you remember back before, you used to have to bring your recycling somewhere. But when we put curbside recycling in, that recycling rate went up considerably. And right now we throw away about at least 150 pounds per household of this material. And this um, is a good outlet for the material. Let's see, what else is? I don't want to forget something. Uh, again, we uh, simple pays twenty dollars a ton for the material that's collected from each municipality. Uh, you get that on a monthly basis, and you also have the advantage of the avoided disposal costs. So anything that you're not bringing to the um, burn facility to burn, you're not paying to burn it. So it gives you that advantage as, as well. Uh, some of the other communities that have started already, uh, uh, West Hartford uh, is New Britain, of course. Um, Bristol, uh, Rocky Hill just started their program. Torrington starts in a month. Uh, Harwinton just started. Uh, Farmington, East Hartford. So there are multiple um, municipalities, and I think mo most mun municipalities across the U.S. seem to be joining. He started the uh, company only four years ago. He's a young guy. His family owned um, when he was growing up. 
they own thrift stores. And so he realized the need for um, these stores to get material in order to uh, you know, get people interested in shopping in the stores. You need to always have new material. And one of the uh, biggest problems that he saw um, through his parents was that it's difficult to get that material. So he decided to pilot this concept in Michigan. He tried it in one community and it was overwhelmingly successful. So he gets enough material to cover all of the costs and still pay the municipalities uh, that $20 a ton. Uh, he now is in close to 4 million homes. So um, he's in the Austin region. He's in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth region. He's in uh, areas of Michigan. He just uh, started in Raleigh, North Carolina. And in this area, it's New Britain. Stanford will be the next hub location in Connecticut. And uh, Woburn in Massachusetts and Taunton in Massachusetts. So those are the closest hubs to you. And I think hey, that covers hey, it. Thank <laughs> you very much. Do council members have questions? For Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. Um, are we planning on, uh, when, when are we planning on doing this in Weathersfield? Uh, well, you, we? you, I think that's that, up to you. Is that the question of the day? It's on the, the next it's item. Not on the yeah. Agenda. Yes, yeah, I mean, if we, we pass it, though, I didn't see when the start. Oh, was. yeah, oh, so it's basically yeah, four to six weeks, yeah. Um, you'll, it'll take them about four to six weeks. Uh, they do a mailing, so uh, they do actually do two mailings. Uh, one is a postcard mailing, uh, just telling you it's coming soon. Uh, but I think the primary reason that they're successful is the the first mailing is the bag and a postcard that tells you, you know, where to go and what to put in. Uh, and the bag itself, uh, when you get it in the mail, I think you don't throw it out. You don't put it in your junk mail or, you know, recycle it. Um, you wonder what it is. So I think that's the, a clever part of his marketing. The other part that's clever is as you drive down the street, and if your neighbor, you know, like if you've seen any at Rocky Hill yet, as you drive down the street, you'll see them on the street. So it reminds you to fill your bag at home. So it's kind of a, um, an ongoing marketing system built in just because it's a hot pink bag. And it really shows up well in the snow because I passed several in West Hartford in the snow. Uh, yeah, so well, you can basically start in six weeks. Will we get the tonnage numbers? Or yeah. is that that's something that's shareable? Yeah, you'll get the tonnage m numbers every month. And um, <coughs> is there, a, where are the head, is the headquarters of this organization? Is it in Michigan? Uh, it's it in Michigan, yeah. And is there a, a giving arm to this organization? Are they a for are they a nonprofit? They're a for profit company. Okay. Um, they just you know supply a lot of nonprofits okay. with material. And is there a giving arm to this company as well? No one's ever asked me that question, so I don't know the answer. It might be nice to know if there is. I they, can, it seems I can like they're check. fairly generous as a organization for from what they do. Yeah, I can check. I don't. I honestly don't don't know the answer for okay. sure. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. That's and all. Kristen, would you explain about um, people calling if there's a complaint that somebody didn't pick up the bag, and how does all of that work? Yeah, so um, there's an 800 number uh, that either you can connect to through the town, or the town can give it out, or it's on obviously on the website. So if, if there's a missed pickup, which literally hardly ever happens, um, or if there's something contaminated in the bag, so they did have one case of a contaminated bag that hasn't picked been picked up out of all that, um, that that they've picked up for the past four years. So there was something toxic in the bag, and they didn't they didn't pick it up. Um, but anything like that, they have an 800 number, so they will actually come back and get it if it, if it's accidentally missed. Um, the other thing is, if you are moving or if you need extra bags, you just uh, go online and let them know. Uh, when your bag is uh, full and they pick up your bag, they'll leave you uh, plus one. So if you put out one bag, they'll tie two bags to your recycling cart. If you put out two bags, they'll tie three bags to your recycling cart because they know you're a good donator. But if you, for instance, are moving and you know you're going to need 12 bags because you want to do a lot of donating, you can just um, you know, go online and say that you need 12 bags dropped off and they'll do that. Great. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Just two things. Well, first of all, Kristen, I think this is fabulous. Do you have any um, possible idea or numbers on participation rates, like what percentage of a community, and then maybe f for West Hartford or another community, if you know it, what might revenue they get for a year? So participation on average. What so I, I don't know the revenue yet for West Hartford. I haven't looked at that. Um, but as far as participation, they get about 25 pounds per household per year. Now, obviously, some households don't do it, but other houses do it all the time so they, they don't really count how many bags they pick up they just do it all by weight so it's averaging at about 25 pounds you know across the board per household so that's what you can expect approximately 
Yeah, and I, I've heard that West Hartford's partic doing particularly well. Um, I mentioned some things to the mayor, but um, you know, putting it on your Facebook, getting the word out. Uh, Simple does a press release and let, lets people know. Uh, but the mayor of West Hartford and also New Britain did a, um, you know, sort of a, invited the press and took pictures. You know, everybody can put their bag out on the first day. And anything you can do to get um, residents aware of it will help, help with your numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, by chance, uh, do you have an average tonnage per town based on, you know, you know, say a town of our size comparable, what you would see in a year as a, you know, tonnage that would come into us? So you're, yeah, so I'm not sure how many houses you are, but times 20 to 25 pounds a household is what the number would be. I'm not sure how many houses you have. Um, but I, I can figure it out and okay. email it back to you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this is great because we're not only saving the 20 bucks, we're also saving 60 something on the other yeah. side and uh, going so that if people in the town do support this, it'll make a big difference on our refuse and recycling and save us some bucks. Yeah, it will. And also, I mean, it is, it's, it's not a donation because they are obviously a for profit company, but from a recycling point of view, for every all this material that you take out of the waste stream and put it back into the supply stream, it creates, it creates jobs. It's actually um, for every 10,000 tons of textile diversion, you create about 10, 10 jobs. So, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So, uh, may I have a motion? To, um, make a motion to approve an agreement for a collection of soft recyclables, Great Lakes Recycling Inc. Doing business as simple recycling. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much, Thank Kristen. You. Appreciate yeah. your time. One extra here. I'll, I'll you have that. Okay. We'll give you a call Thank later you. in the week. Okay, awesome. Thank Perfect. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a 2018 Department of Justice Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant. Do I have a motion? Yep, a uh, motion to accept the Department of Justice Bulletproof Vest Partnership Grant. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, this is sure. something we do annually. Um, we recommend you accept the grant money that buys Bulletproof Vests. Okay, thank you. Any questions? I like okay. the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so do I. <laughs> um, okay, um, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Motion passes. Next, we have the approval of a memorandum of understanding with the Wethersfield Board of Ed. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I approve the memorandum of understanding with the Wethersfield Board of Education for the transfer of school custodial functions from the Board of Education to the town of Wethersfield. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. As uh, Council Member Lesser has stated, the Shared Services Committee is recommending the town um, take oversight over of the uh, custodial functions of the Board of Education. This agreement provides for that transition. Um, it outlines how things will be handled through transition, what uh, jobs will come over to the town, and uh, how and what we're going to do. So. Very good. Are there any questions? Councilor Forrest? Not so much a question, but just, uh, I guess, uh, appreciation for some of the people that have done a lot of work. I know that Deputy Mayor has been working on this project for a long time, and I want to sort of, of congratulate him is, but, but yeah, congratulate. Congratulate him <laughs> is, the right, is, it is the right word. And also recognition from the Board of Education members who also had to work hard and long about how to work this scenario out how it's a good I think it's an excellent show of how the two boards even though we are specifically de destined to do different things can come together and try to find some good ways in which we can work together and also that you know we now have a singular idea, concept of when we take care of our buildings that that sort of comes from the same place and the out the outside of the buildings and the inside of the buildings and the care of the buildings while it's sort of technically owned by the town of course the Board of Education uses them um, that there's that that nice sort of unity of, of, of uh, maintenance that I think we'll be able to find some nice efficiencies 
um, and I and I want to, and I think that working together with the board and Tony's work and everyone else on shared services um, did a really nice job with this. So I'm happy to approve it, and you know, there's a lot of good work here, and, and congratulations for a job well done on, on both this side and on the board side. Thank, Thank you, Matt. You. Okay, very good. Any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, moving into bids. Do I have a, mo a motion for the purchase of new in-car computer terminals for the Westfield Police Vehicles? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to mo uh, move to authorize the purchase of in-car computers for the Weathersfield Police Department in the amount of $52,970 from the Asset Fortress, 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 Fortress Fund. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, no manager? I think Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. I think um, Officer Gove He's here. is here to talk to you about this particular project. Thank you. Welcome, Officer Gove. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to answer any questions in regards to this project that you may have, um, but I'll start with a brief synopsis of what's, what's occurring. Uh, the police department is moving and has purchased a new records management and CAD software. Uh, during our preliminary kickoff meetings, we determined that the current technology in our cruisers is insufficient to support this. So the chief decided to uh, go and try to make a purchase out of the asset forfeiture fund. Uh, to stay out of uh, town budget funds and taxpayer dollars, which we all like. Um, and uh, these, these uh, machines are, are quite robust and ready to handle at least the next five years of service. So I'd like to answer any questions that you may have in regards to these. Sure. Thank you. Councilors, have any questions? Councilor Hurley? Hey, what do the machines send back to the department to store? Like what, everything? I'm sorry, can you repeat well, that? Well, you, you said it do, it, they don't work with your equipment at the department? The current, the current machines, um, without getting too deep into the weeds, uh, have uh, processors basically that are nine years old. So they're not powerful enough to run what's called Web RMS, which is the new next gen software. The new ones will be more than powerful enough to handle that. OK. Councilor Lesser? Thanks, Madam Mayor. So, um, Officer, does this go into every cruiser? Is this enough money that will that they will update the computers in every single cruiser we have? Or is this for a portion of them? Just for a portion. The the cruisers that currently have mobile data terminals in them will receive replacements. That's a total of ten units. So, the average out or divided out, it's around fifty two hundred dollars per unit. And secondly, what? Without getting too specific, what will this al allow officers to do that they couldn't do before? Sure. Uh, actually, that's a great question. It's something I'd like to touch on. Um, current uh, technology in the cars are all fixed. So therefore, we can't take them out. And as we know, everybody's a mobile workforce. Everyone has a laptop, tablet, cell phone. Um, these machines will actually allow our officers to go into homes, still stay connected to the cruiser wirelessly, take statements uh, for cases, which typing something is a lot faster than handwriting it. So it's moving us a little bit forward. Further, it can get us into an e-signature platform uh, where we don't have to really carry as much pen and paper with us. Uh, the judicial branch has moved and has approved e-signature. Our software will support it. This will allow us to do that as well. So it also increase that workflow, make things a little bit quicker and far less paper. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. So we looks like, uh, Officer Gove, good to Sir. see you. Good to see you. <laughs> um, we talked about uh, 10 cruisers or, or some part. What's the plan for the remainder of the cruisers? Or do you think we need them? Or? Uh, at this point, we do not. The, the current cruisers that we're going to replace are the ones that are on the line right now. So any other cruisers, such as uh, a detective car, for instance, or um, school resource officer, for instance, don't necessarily need the technology in there. They're not using it as often, certainly as frequently as a patrol officer would. So I don't think that it's uh, a prudent expenditure to, to put those in there. And then how about... Uh, you know, we talked about a, almost a phase out, whether it's of these processors or it sounds like we're moving into a different software, which may be a little bit more of a drag on the processors that we have. Is that yes, sort of accurate? That is correct. So therefore, increasing the power. Correct. Um, but what is uh, the thought process about five years from now when either a new version comes out or an updated version? Is there a way to uh, pl plan or elongate you know, this particular purchase so that we're not sort of caught in that three and four year technology cycle which is so costly but we're trying to elongate that 
that. Absolutely. We're, See where I'm going with that a little? Yeah, I'm actually on the same page with you on that. Yeah. Uh, the, the hope, just like we did with the last units, was to buy them as high end as we possibly can and spend the money up front, and then that will help them to last further out. Um, and actually, to that point, one thing I did neglect is that the five-year warranty would be rolled in. It's, it's not standard. We would also purchase that right up front, so we would at least have a five-year warranty on our hands right out of the gate. So we're looking before, so year six is when we can first start to either think about any type of an upgrades or have to pay for anything like that. Absolutely. Um, with technology, it unfortunately turns over roughly every 90 <coughs> days. So we're really seeing a strain on, on as uh, society moves forward with technology. It's, it's getting more and more powerful every 90 days, and we see refreshes. Right. My goal is to, just like yours, stay away from the rapid refreshes. The last units we had were good for nine years. And they lasted us nine years. That's a pretty good life in a 24 by 7 environment right. that isn't necessarily the cleanest. So I'm hoping we can push these just as far, but at least we have five years right in the beginning. Okay. Thank you, Officer Gove. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, next we have the street light project. Nope. We'll, we'll oh, we'll geez, skipped one, sorry. Uh, next we have the replacement of the docks at Millwoods Pool. Do we have a motion? Uh, yes, motion to accept the bid from Easy Docks Northeast FWM Docks, including alternate number one, alternate number two, and upgrade to stainless steel hardware for the replacement of the docks at Millwoods, Millwoods Pool. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. I'm getting good at that. <laughs> Town manager. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kathy Bagley, director of Parks and Recreation, is here this evening to review this project with you. Thank you. Good evening, Kathy. Good evening. Um, this project is to replace the current docks that are down at Mill Woods. The current docks are wooden docks. We've gotten a life expectancy of them out of there for, we're almost up to 30 years now. And um, even though we replace wood every year, we're banging in nails every year, they've gone past their life expectancy. The new docks that we're proposing tonight are the polyethylene docks that are um, the same style as what's at the Cove. So we refer to them as the plastic docks. That's not the scientific name, but it gives you the idea of what's down there now. Much better product. Um, Maintenance-wise, they're easy to care for. Uh, many of you know we have a geese problem at Mill Woods that they seem to like that and they like our wood docks and we clean them every day during the, the um, swim season. So um, these are much easier to clean. So there's a lot of different reasons to upgrade now to the new dock system. And the neat thing about the dock system is that they're done in sections that are like a jigsaw puzzle. You can put them in different configurations. Right now, we're going to put them in a similar configuration that we have down there, but it gives us the ability if, as we get more involved with our swim lessons, we can make different kinds of platforms in the future with them. So they're really good, and the added benefit, the recommended vendor is the company that actually did the docks down at Cove Park, and our maintenance staff are very familiar with them. So it's kind of a win-win for us to go with what we feel is um, the least expensive dock, but a good quality dock, because we've had it now down at the Cove. Great, thank you. Do we have council <coughs> questions? Deputy Mayor? Kathy, uh, are these docks similar to the ones at the Cove, where if the water goes up or down, they'll raise and uh, drop accordingly, like the ones we have at the Cove? No, the, the good thing down at the docks at the Cove, they have a very sophisticated anchoring system that they do go up and down with the tide. At Mill Woods, they're going to be anchored as they currently are, which is on the shore. But the good thing about the water in the Mill Woods Pond, it doesn't, the height doesn't vary that much. Right. Even if we have a washout, it doesn't go that crazy. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes, thank you. Thank you. Now on to the street light projects. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the purchase and sales agreement with Eversource, the master efficiency services agreement with Power Secure, and the street light maintenance service agreement with Higgins Electric. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Council, as you just heard the motion, this uh, project has several parts at this point. Uh, first and foremost, some background. Uh, a couple years ago, working with the Public Works Committee, uh, we started the process of acquiring the streetlight system from Eversource. This is something that has been going on in, in towns in Connecticut for several years. CCM pre-qualified three vendors. Um, the staff interviewed each of the three and picked Power Secure as our preferred vendor. Uh, we will purchase roughly 2,803 street lights and 550 poles. Now the poles we're purchasing are those poles that only carry a street light. If there's a power, if there's an electric uh, line to it, if there's a cable line to it or phone line to it, those stay in the possession, the poles themselves stay in the possession of Eversource um, and we just own what's called the Cobra Head lamp and that's what we'll be changing out on each one. Once we acquire these uh, lights, we move from a rate 116, which is what we pay per month per light, to rate 117, which is the rate at which towns maintain the lights themselves only pay for power. And if you look at the savings analysis, you can see that's where the real money is in the savings. Once we own them, we will put a series of test fixtures out for people to comment on. We've picked three streets, and off the top of my head, I don't remember which three streets we picked, but we'll have it That's out there. That's what everyone wants to know. <laughs> what? Everyone wants to know the three streets. Well, there'll be a press release. There'll be press releases, <laughs> and there's three separate fixtures that we will test. The cost differential between the total retrofit between the three fixtures is like $6,500, so it's more about fit than it is about the cost. <coughs> Once that's done, we will select the fixture and employ power secure to change out the entire lighting system. While we're doing that, we will continue to work on the Main Street project is where we will retrofit and enhance the decorative lights on Main Street and try to add some of those decorative lights and we're going to change out the lighting in this building and all the other exterior lightings at the town facilities. Uh, the savings analysis and cost analysis shows those, uh, shows those features and shows those costs. At the end of the day, we will spend no more and probably have savings, even with putting aside maintenance money per year and the lease payments, which we will pay off over seven years, of what we spend on streetlights today. Uh, that is the expectation, and that has been the experience with the other towns that have done these type of improvements. So that's where we are today. What will happen next is we will set a closing with Eversource and pay them roughly $472,000 for the street light system. We will identify lights that currently are not working and make a list of those. So at closing, they will still be responsible for repairing those lights. We have a list of leaning poles that uh, we want them to address as well. That'll be part of their responsibility through the transition. And then once we own them, we will have Higgins under contract. So if a light does go out, if there's a pole that falls over, they can repair it and replace it as we go through the retrofit process. The new regular Cobra Head streetlight fixtures will have a 10-year warranty. So if one malfunctions in that 10 years, it'll be replaced under warranty. Um, but this is something we'll pay off over seven years and then have savings and go forward. And can you talk to the time frame? When would these fixtures be changed out and how long would that process take? It would take about four months to change them all out. We hope to start in the fall and get it done before winter because it's really hard to do this in the winter time. So okay. we want to get this done as soon as possible. The, the Power Secure has been with us for going on two years now. Um, Eversource has been the problem on reconciliation. What happens is Eversource sends us a list of the 2,800 street lights that we have. Power Secure under a letter of intent with us audited that list, they actually sent, physically went around to the street light system in town and cataloged each light and there's, you know, that took the time to reconcile. So now we're ready to go. Even though we're not quite ready on Main Street, we can handle the, the regular street light re, uh, retrofit and manage to work on the other piece as we go. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Councilor Forrest? Not so much a question, but I, I think a congratulations and uh, a job very well done should go to the town manager who's been working on this project for a long time. There's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of financing involved. 
and also to the chair of the uh, Mr. S Councilor Spinell is the chair of the Infrastructure Committee and Public Works Committee and to, to put this together this is a big change for our town it's a positive change in so many ways whether you want more focused light and less glaring light whether we're looking at energy savings in the long run and seven years from now we're going to really be seeing that it's going to be redo or uh, improve and reconstruct and put really nice lighting down and expanding it down in the old weathers field for a lot of our celebrations that we have down there and there's lots of i think there's some controls that can really do some fun things with those lights like dim them at the right time make them brighter for safety at other times outfit a lot of our facilities this is a real kind of lighting overhaul in many ways that we're going to do in a really financially thoughtful way and and win in the long run and that's it was not easy to put together there were many variations there was a lot of financing discussions in the background that i think our manager handled i mean you know without without pause frankly uh really a good control over it and i have a lot of confidence in this project moving forward and there's a lot of thanks and appreciation i think that go around this dais but those are the two people i saw is really leading this charge and i'm definitely going to vote for it so it's a move in the right direction great thank you any other comments or questions? Seeing none, um, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. And I believe we have a financing motion as well for streetlights. Motion to authorize the town manager to enter a lease agreement with TD Equipment Financing for the financing of the purchase and, and refurbishment of streetlights. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Uh, Mike O'Neill, finance director, is here to answer any specifics, but roughly we need about $2 million, as we said, it stated in the, uh, in the opening remarks on this. We still don't have a lockdown number on Main Street, so we've bid it three separate amounts, right? And we're asking you to approve up to the top amount, and we'll settle on it as we figure out Main Street. But we do need financing in place so we can pay Eversource for the lights and begin the retrofit. So uh, all the lowest bidder has a consistent interest rate, 3.02% across all three lease amount levels. So that's not going to change between one or the other. So we'd ask you to approve that. Mike, anything? You sure? <laughs> do, we have, do we have any questions? He wants to stay there. You covered it. Any questions? This came out. This came just a, of a note. This came out unanimously, Republicans and Democrats out of committee. Oh yeah. And uh, and there, there's everyone's on board with this one, as as it appeared in the committee at least. Mm -hmm. Very good. It was nice to see. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we have no ordinances, resolutions, or appointments for introduction, so we will move into the long list of meeting minutes. Do I have a motion for the April 2nd regular town council meeting? Anybody? No, I approve those minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Second. <laughs> no, okay. that's my, my fault there. No, no, no. No, no, my, my no worries, no worries. Um, are there any changes, additions, deletions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, moving on to the April 16th regular town council meeting. Do I have a motion? Move to approve those minutes. Okay, do I have a second? You can abstain. You can make the motion. Second. Oh, I can. Okay. Are there any um, changes to the April 16th town council minutes? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed and any abstentions? Okay. Moving on to the April 18th special meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any changes to the April 18th meeting minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed and any abstentions? All right, April 23rd special meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any changes to the April 23rd meeting minutes? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Any abstentions? Motion passes. Uh, do I have a motion for the April 25th special meeting minutes? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Any changes to the April 25th special meeting minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. April 30th special meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Yes, motion to approve. Second. Okay, any changes to the April 30th special meeting minutes? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. I was not there that night. Okay, thank you, Councilor Lesser. Motion passes. Um, and do I have a motion for the May 2nd special meeting? So move to approve. And do I have a second? Second. Okay, any changes to the May 2nd special meeting minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay, thank you, Councilor Hurley. Uh, motion passes. Okay, we are back into public comment. Members of the public have five minutes to speak on any item. Mr. Colantonio, come on up. Gascol Antonio, 16 Morrison Avenue, again. You know, this, this is amazing. I work for 37 years as a civil engineer and people used to pay me for my advice. Now I wanted to give it free and it's not even taken. I just heard the town manager that there is consideration to, to change uh, the traffic pattern on that corner building on uh, Silas Dean and Morrison Avenue. That's completely crazy. There is nothing wrong with the driveway. Nothing at all. The changes that I, as, as I understand now is that, you know, you make it just get in from Morrison Avenue and you have to get out on Silas Dean. In other words, if somebody really shies away from traffic and whatnot, they cannot even get out on, on, on Morrison Avenue where there is less traffic. It has to go on a four-lane highway. To me, it doesn't just make sense at all. But anything done on Morrison Avenue, and I've been for nine, ten years, nothing makes sense. Every year since they did the sidewalk over again, every year they got to fix the curbing. Why? Because it was not designed properly. Nothing is done correctly there. Nothing from three foot grass strip, from no grass strips at all, from two foot grass strips, from 10, 15. The signs are between the sidewalk and the curbing. The signs are in the back of the sidewalk. I do not understand at all. And thank you, Councilor Forrest, for, for bringing it up. But we do not need any more studies or reports. The reports have already been done. And I've asked the question again, and I'm going to read it again. I still have three minutes. I have been asking for a stop sign on Morrison Avenue for about 10 years now, 10 years. Nothing yet. The reason I received from not having a stop sign is that there are too many stop signs in town. We don't need any more. And the existing traffic does not warrant a stop sign. Existing traffic, it's double. Hillcrest Avenue on Morrison Avenue. I have pointed out on numerous occasions that Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean Highway before 1955. What does that mean? That before then we never had true traffic. I have also pointed out and, and compared the existing condition of Morrison Avenue and Hillcrest Avenue, and tonight I will compare them again. Morrison Avenue is 24 feet wide, Hillcrest Avenue is 30 feet wide. Morrison Avenue has a three foot grass strip. Hillcrest Avenue has 15 foot grass strip. Morrison Avenue has an average daily traffic of 730 cars. 730 cars. Hillcrest Avenue has 365. People, you, never ask yourself why. The distance from the curb to the front of the house is approximately 38 feet on Morrison Avenue. 
And Hillcrest Avenue, it's 60. You know what it does, the noise level? I don't know if you have, well, you must have heard it, this before, but, and you're getting bored, but I'm not gonna go any place. Orchard Street connects Morrison Avenue and Hillcrest Avenue. The town has taken measurements for the intersectional side distance for Orchard at Hillcrest and found to be 344 feet and 970 feet. And yet, at that intersection has three stop signs. Three stop signs. The town has taken also measurement for the intersectional side distance uh, on, on Morrison Avenue and, and basically an orchard. And on one side is 290 feet, and the police report says you need a stop sign there. The town has also taken a measurement for uh, the intersection side distance for Tifton Road on Morrison Avenue. And guess what? The distance is 232 feet. 232. If the police says that you need a stop sign at 290, don't you need one for 232 going downhill? After 37 years, I have to be convinced myself that you don't need a stop sign. You do need a stop sign. It's not safe. Hillcrest Avenue and Orchards with 344 feet in intersection side distance as a stop sign and Morrison Avenue at Tifton does not have it, you know. Where is the logic? By state standard, a stop sign is needed in the eastbound direction since the intersection side distance is only good for 24 miles per hour. The posted speed is 25 and people go 31 miles per hour. <coughs> that means the 85th percentile. That means that, you know, basically 15% of that, they go much faster than that. And the street is not safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. <coughs> Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Torsha, come on up. Uh, Mr. Bridges, is there a, an agreement uh, between the, the town of Wethersfield and CRDA? Um, during public comment, we I'm asking, is there, a, is there a, an agreement sure. in place between the CRDA and the uh, and, and the uh, town of Wethersfield. Um, let me just explain that during public comment, we don't engage. This is your opportunity to speak to us, but we don't answer questions well, during I, public I, comment. If you answer the question, we'll get to that. Is Go that ahead, a, you may answer. Is that an agreement, to yes or no? The, the council approved an agreement this evening. Okay. Is, is the prevailing wage attached to that? I'm sorry? Prevailing wage, is that, is that attached to that? That will be up to CRDA and the rules that the state has on the money. You are the owner, though, right? Say again? You are the owner of the property. No. No, we're not. No, we are not. Well, who's the owner of that? Uh, the Lexington Group, which is the developer. You sold that in the property? It wasn't we, yours. We never owned it. No. The town never owned it. Um, well, you, you think maybe you should put a prevailing wage attached to that? Or... Uh, uh, or have a 15% uh, residents of Wethersfield that working in the place? That will be up to CRDA and the rules this, for the state money. Well, for the sake of, 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 of Wethersfield, don't you think you should do some on that? Um, right? This is your opportunity to speak. We really do not engage in a back and forth, sir. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Come on up. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Tom Azarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I know it's very late in the game for the budget season. Uh, I just wanted to review my interpretation of the budget pr presentation. I believe it's stated in there that uh, the town welcomes comments from its citizens and taxpayers, and it asks for input on programs that taxpayers want, taxpayers may want to reduce, and so forth. Over the last few weeks, we've heard a number of commenters talking about the road conditions in Wethersfield. And uh, most of you up here tonight were out on the campaign trail in, in the fall, and you got an earful from almost every house that you knocked on. 
And I would venture to say that there are many more people that utilize the road system in our town than that utilize the school system in our town. And I'm not saying that we don't need to educate our children. Of course we do, but there's a big budget in that program that doesn't get our line by line attention. You don't get to pick it apart. You get to approve it or disapprove it. And I would ask that you would consider a further investigation into the road funding program in town. We've heard a number of people tonight speak on that. Uh, it doesn't take a genius to, to drive around town and figure out the condition of the roads. Uh, I realize that money is very tight. Uh, I think that some more emphasis should be put on the road program. Uh, let's take a second look at maybe uh, we're never going to get it perfect. It's just financially impractical. But as, if there's a way to uh, increase the amount of spending on roads, try and get that uh, number down a little bit, uh, I think that would be a worthwhile investment for, for the majority of the taxpayers. Um, the other comment I wanted to make is regarding the, the streetlight program. Uh, I'm hoping that there's a guarantee somewhere in there. Uh, I was involved with a, a lighting program on a much smaller scale. They did an extensive study. They figured out the consumption of each and every fixture on the property, uh, what the replacement lighting was going to consume, and, and they got a 33% reduction in consumption. And it was a hard, fast number. That's, that's what they were guaranteeing. And I hope those numbers exist for the street program so that, uh, you know, we know what we're going to get in seven years when the program's paid off or, or whatever the payout is, uh, a, a true reduction and not just, you know, spinning our wheels to, to break even. Um, and the reason I bring that up is the Weathersfield High School renovation. Uh, I, I understand that we... Uh, entered into an agreement to uh, provide efficient lighting and electrical uh, fixtures and pumps, motors, etc. cetera. Uh, and the program's done. I think we got some kind of rebate for uh, uh, improvements to the uh, electrical consumption. And yet we have this huge electric bill. And uh, Mr. Emmett gets up here and says, well, the building's being used a lot. Well, it was being used a lot before. So are those numbers real? Should we look at getting some, some people in there, the architects, the engineers that did all the lighting design? Is something wrong? Are we using a lot more electricity than we're, we're supposed to? Or are lighting schemes being mismanaged? Are we lighting the whole school up at night when the janitors clean the building? Or uh, any number of things. Maybe our uh, heating and ventilation system's designed incorrectly and it's using a lot more power than it should be. But I think it should be looked at. Um, and that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masarella. Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Young? <clears throat> Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, I was currently reviewing this, uh, the schedules in the back of the budget, the proposed budget book. And in there, we have uh, a, a number of spends, such as, um, and I noticed window film for the Hamner Wright School of $60,000, which is, just film. That's a heck of a lot of film. And I know you also have in the schedule for the year 2022 to renovate the Hamner School. So I would say don't waste any time or any money on the Hamner School if, if you do go that route, because you're only going to take it out. 
Same like at the high school, when before the renovation, some five years, six years before, they put in all those air conditioners, brand new air conditioners. And then when the renovation came along, they threw them out. Terrible waste. Um, I don't know much about the, um, those light, lights on the streets, you know, buying that. I, I just don't know. I haven't followed it, so of course I wouldn't know much about it. But uh, uh, sometimes the analysis is good and sometimes it's bad. Uh, normally what we've seen in the town of Wethersfield it hasn't been the greatest. And uh, I, uh, you know, there's flaws that come up and there's problems and there's, there's wages, uh, sending people up, uh, buying equipment, sending people up over to replace light bulbs and whatnot and other kinds of things. Uh, it's just gonna be a lot of extra cost, I believe. Of course, I haven't read all of this stuff. In the meantime, We've been seeing articles in the paper, poor fiscal policy mortgaged state's future. Uh, big article with, uh, by Don Kepler Smith, a, a local state of Connecticut kind of economist. And uh, he's optimistic about the state's economy because of what he calls the, uh, the pronounced lack of fiscal discipline in the state and local finances, uh, creating greater, greater uncertainty, undermining business confidence, subduing job creation, and promoting out-migration. Uh, he, he writes this article as though he's talking to his two-year-old grandson, and he starts off telling him that he's in big trouble. He's in big trouble because he owes a lot of money, the two-year-old. Uh, and he goes on talking about his chances of uh, getting a solid career here in Connecticut are dwindling. Uh, he works for Moody's. Uh, uh, Moody's, and it shows that uh, Connecticut's residents owe $10,300 in unfunded state pension liabilities for each person in the state. Um, and this is because of decades of physical irresponsibility and poor decisions. And we've seen so many of those poor decisions and reckless deals that they have pulled up at the state. Um, he's an economist for 38 years and uh, primarily works in the Connecticut area. Um, Connecticut's, Connecticut's economy is at the crossroads and I'm not optimistic about the future, he says. Uh, the pronounced lack of physical discipline in the state, the local finances, we have them right here, uh, adversely affect our economy by creating greater uncertainty, undermining business confidence, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, he says that uh, the, the, this, this first five initiatives that the, the great governor of the state of Connecticut came out with was like, uh, I'll feed some of my kids and the rest of you can go hungry. Well, I've stood up here many times saying the way that the, the deals were being made up at the state of Connecticut with certain companies, it was so wrong. It should be lower the taxes on all those businesses and they'll all do well. Instead, selected <coughs> ones were getting certain deals. And now look what we have. There was another article <laughs> called State of Malaise. Connecticut economy shrinks in 17. Growth rates, growth ranks 49th in US. This was um, the Connecticut's uh, economy shrank in 2017, uh, the second consecutive year and the, uh, and the state's production of goods and services were smaller than in the previous year, the federal government reported. Isn't that like our home prices? We just saw them drop from last year till now $8,300 per house on the average. Same thing. Connecticut ranks 49 among the states in growth or lack of, outpacing only Louisiana and raising the prospects that it is in an economic malaise, as, as the economist said. Um, the state tumbled from 32 in, 19, in 2016 to 49. Mr. Young, your that five is minutes where, is up. If you'll that just is finish exactly up, why we're in so much trouble. 
madam. And, and we see the spending, we see the borrowing, we see the irresponsible government constantly chipping away at our heels, biting us, and taking away from us. It's the same idea as the creditor, the uh, circuit breaker, taking money from the workers and giving it to those who aren't working. Same like the renter's, re renter's rebate, taking money from workers and giving it to others. Okay, it's the same you, idea as putting tolls on the major highways so where people who are going to work have to get nicked. I'm glad that thing died. Thank, Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Is there anybody else in the public who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing none, I will ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss legal matters. Do I have a motion? Motion to go into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion passes. Thank you.